Howdy folks, this is Dio Navis. Just uh, wanted to get with you guys today and talk about gravity inverted containers. So, this is my uh, warp freighter. Uh, it was something else, but I converted it. So it has six of these uncommon gravity inverted container mediums on it and one advanced gravity inverted container uh, medium. So these two up here are uncommon. So I got six uncommon medium gravity inverted containers, one advanced gravity inverted container. And all the containers are empty. So I, I'm going to show you this. This is important because we're going to look at the ship in different states here. Uh, notice I'm linked to a container with hematite. That's going to come in handy in just a moment. All right. So all these containers are empty. They're not linked to a hub. Where's my hub? Why don't you have a hub? You're an idiot. Uh, we'll find out in just a minute. Uh, so I'm going to get in the seat. And if you look at the top right up here, it says I'm at 369.22 tons. So that's my empty weight of this ship. Right? And that's Granted, it's not full of fuel. It's only got 36% space fuel and 34% at fuel, but, but we'll leave that fuel state static so it won't matter, all right? Uh, so I'm at 369.22 tons, if you can't read that on my uh, video here. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put hematite in every container and we're gonna sit back in the seat and we're gonna see what the ship mass that's the total ship mass, right? That's the weight of the ship itself, all the parts on it, all the voxel on it, uh, and all the contents of all the containers as well, right? So we're gonna take all of these, we're gonna put hematite in them, as much as I can fit. All right, so there's 77 in that one. 86 in that one. Why does the advanced hold less? I don't know why. Uh, the uncommon holds more. So let's take a look at this here. Oops. All right, so we're almost full. All my containers. And we'll just pop back through real quick and just verify all of them. So. That one's got 86, that one's got 86, that one's got 86, 86 kiloliters that is. Front one, 86, center one, 86. The rear one only has 77, but it's in advanced. All right, so we're going to get in the seat. We're going to see how much weight the ship now is at. There's my, a point to all this. Okay, so I'm at 2.37 kilotons, right? So 2.37 kilotons. And this ship would not take off uh, with that much weight from Alioth. I probably can't even get off the ground. I'm not even going to try because I don't want to use a single ounce of fuel. I want, I want you to, to get this. So, okay. So 2.37 kilotons. Loaded weight ship and cargo all the parts pieces and hematite that i have on board so what we're going to do now is we're going to put a hub on and connect all the containers and the point i'm trying to make here someone told me this i didn't realize this is i had all these containers linked to a hub and i was told hey your gravity inverted containers don't invert gravity and don't work if you have them connected to a hub and I was like, okay, so they're pretty much like regular containers if I connect them to a hub. So I'm wasting my money if I buy gravity inverted containers and I connect them to a hub. I said, I'm not sure I believe you. I'm going to test it. So that's what we're doing right now. Uh, so let me get to my container hub. We're going to put it kind of in the center of the ship here, more or less. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to raise it up in the air a little bit. <sighs> Come on. 
And we're gonna go to that. We're gonna go to six. Nothing's connected to it. So now I'm gonna start connecting. One, two. You can see those two are connected. Three, four. And all four of those are connected. Now I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna connect these other three. So back container. Uh, all right. Center container. And front container. So I got, let's, let's count these. One, Hard to count. Uh, all right, so we got these four for sure. And so, pretty sure I got them all linked. So, let me just make sure here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I count seven. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, okay. So we got all seven containers linked. All right. And now it shows all that hematite, it's all full, all of those amounts. Right. Now let's uh, check the ship out with the hub connected. No change in what's in the containers. And I'm at 3.37 kilotons. 3.37 kilotons. All right. So did I write that down right previously? Did I did I actually write that down correctly? Let's let's try this. Hold on. Let's go back here. Let's disconnect all the inlinks. Move inlink. Remove in link. Ah, come on, stupid thing. Let's remove out links. All right, there we go. Well, no. Okay, so it doesn't like me doing that when they have stuff in them. So let me do this. Let me take all the hematite out. I'll put it back into this container. All right, now let's, uh... all right, so now it lets me remove the end links because the container's empty. Okay. And take that off. Now let's try this again. Let's see where we're at. The ship is empty, so we should be back to 369.22. And we are. We're at 369.22. Okay, our full weight was 3.37 kilotons. All right, so let's put the hematite back in. Let's just double check, make sure I didn't fat finger this uh, or write it down wrong. I know you guys can rewind the video, but I can't rerun, rewind my life right now. Oh, that tells you how old I am when I say rewind, right? Yes, I'm in my 50s. All right, let's see here. All right, just validate, everything's full. All right. All right, let's jump back in the seat. So I don't have a hub connected. What's my weight gonna be? 2.37 kilotons.
Okay. So the exact same load with a hub weighs 3.37 kilotons. The exact same load without a hub weighs 2.37 kilotons. 2.37 kilotons. Is that? Let's hook, let's hook up the hub one more time just to just to test this out thoroughly. Back and forth, back and forth, right? So the gravity inverted containers work, and when you're in a warp shuttle and you're spinning charges to move mass, then it makes sense to reduce that mass as much as possible by using your gravity inverted containers. But if you, in my case, link my seven containers to a hub, I increase the weight on the ship by one kiloton. That is crazy. All right, so let's go back here. Put this back on one more time. Put it up in the air so we can see it. Uh, only, I'm gonna hit nine and I'm gonna, I don't know, that'll work. Let's do this. Let's just pretend we're gonna mount it to the, there we go. That'll make it easier to hook up to. All right, so let's hit six on mine. That's the link tool. All right, so those two are linked. Let's go inside and, and link those real quick and make it a little bit easier to discern what's linked and what's not. All right, so that's let's link that one. All right, so I got three linked. Four linked. Five linked. Six linked. And seven linked. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. So let's try this one more time. So. The ship should weigh now 3.37 kilotons, and it does. All right, so a whole kiloton of difference. A whole damn kiloton of difference. So is it always one kiloton with seven medium containers? So if I put uh, exactly, well, I don't know. But I think we proved the point here. If you are using gravity inverted containers with a hub, then you might as well just be using regular containers because it's not doing anything for you and your ship. So if you want your ship to be lighter so that you can get off alley off easier or if you're using a warp uh, freighter like I'm using or a warp shuttle and you want to, to use the gravity inverted containers to cut down on how many warp cells you're having to buy and use uh, or make and use or whatever, then you need to take a look at the containers. Now, is it a pain in the butt for me to uh, <laughs> for me to have to uh, let me put all this back in here? Sorry, come on, there we go. Is it a pain in the butt for me to have to load all the stuff in the container individually if I go to another planet? Yeah, but look at what it saves me. A whole kiloton. That's that's crazy. Uh, so let, let me go ahead and take this off. Well, uh, I can't. They're linked. Let's go back to six. Remove all the end links, right? I, I I cannot believe. Now that makes me wonder if I should have just used large containers and I'd have less containers to be dealing with rather than medium containers. Uh, would my overall weight be better with three me if I took the, the seventh container out if I would my overall weight be better if I had uh, three large containers, one inside and two out here? I, I don't know. 
Uh, could I reconfigure the inside of this so that I could put large containers in here cross uh, ways? I don't think so. I don't think they would fit very well. I could move those up to the front and I probably could get maybe two containers in here, squeeze them in, but it would be tight. Uh, so I don't know. Uh, but it's kind of interesting how this works out. Uh, and now we should be back down to our original empty weight of 369.22 tons. Let's just double check that. 369.22 tons. Alright. Let's get back out of the seat. Notice it's not lagging quite so bad right now. I don't know if it's because uh, it's earlier in the day and there's not as many people on or what the case may be, but I don't seem to be stuck in the seat as long. And now that I said that, I probably jinxed myself, didn't I? Oh, come on. There we go. Not, not too bad of a lag. Still sucks, but not as bad. So, what am I going to do? I am going to leave. Uh, oh, damn. You know what? So, I'm going to put my warp cells in this back one. Actually, I'm going to put all of my junk that I have in here in this back one. Uh, I'm going to leave the hub in here in case I ever need it. And then I'm going to link this container to my warp drive. And hopefully it's linked. Let's see here. Uh, it is linked to the seat still. Okay. Uh, so let's just get in the seat and select the warp point and make sure that those warp cells are showing up. So I've only got one container now linked to my uh, warp drive, and it's the one right under it inside. So that actually works out pretty good. I'm using the advanced container for the warp cells because I think it probably works the best. Don't know that for sure, but I'll have to do some exploring and find that out, won't we? Uh, so anyway, uh, let's go select a system to warp to. Let's say I was going to warp to uh, Talame. Uh, set as warp point. Boom. Okay, so it does display. If I had not connected my container, it would say I had no warp cells, but it says I have 97 and I need to use 26 to get there. So, not too shabby. Not too shabby. Let me actually, let me check some of these other planets. Because I know what it was taken before. Oh, yeah. It was 50-something before. That one's ten was forty six and <laughs> Jack was forty four. Okay, so it says that was four hundred seventy four SU, and it says this one is four hundred eighty six. Okay, well that makes sense. That it needs a couple more warp cells then. Uh, so okay, uh, that is. Uh, that, that's really interesting how the uh, gravity inverted containers work. So it makes me want to take the ones inside except for the one and put them out here so that I can get to all of them easier if I'm running around loading the war and stuff. It's, it's, really, it's really a pain in the ass. You know what I want to do? I want to put this hub on here and connect all these containers. And I want to have somebody, I can't do it, somebody help me write a Lua script that I can use or, or with, a, with a logic system to be able to disconnect the containers from the hub after I have filled them up and reconnect them. So in other words, I push a button, it's disconnected. I push another button, they're all connected. I don't know if I can make that happen or not. Uh, I doubt it, but I'm going to ask the folks that know how to do Lua uh, in the 
in the organization here and I guess we'll try to see what we can do but uh, I think even if I have to fumble with it I may I probably move these two containers out here the two other un, uh, uncommon ones that I have leave the advanced one back there just for the warp cells and and uh, fuel whatever I have to carry uh, all the time in there <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, I guess I'm just, when I go around and collect ore, I'm just going to have to, uh, you know, connect to a container, fill it up, go to another container, fill that one up. It's going to kind of be a pain. I'll probably end up flying around all the sites because I don't want to run back and forth from the ship to the to the uh, miner, mining units and the containers at the mining units. So. Uh, very, very interesting. Uh, I can't remember who told me about the gravity inverted container thing. I think it was Kaveen said MNC said something about it. So uh, I, I want to say that's what it was. So uh, thanks to you guys for pointing that out to me. I didn't realize I was screwing up so badly. And now maybe because I've captured this on video, uh, you guys won't be able to script too badly either. Now, what I would ask for the developers to do is to fix gravity inverted containers so that when you connect them to a hub, they still work like gravity inverted containers and don't act like regular containers. So, uh, gonna have to do some more experimenting uh, with different quantities and different kinds of containers. Like I said, I have uncommon, I have advanced. Uh, gravity inverted i i want to actually talk to taco and see if we can start making uh rare rare gravity inverted containers maybe and if i can put some rare gravity inverted containers on this ship that i use to go warp out and get ore sometimes then that would really save us a lot i think uh probably want to redesign a purpose-built warp shuttle uh a warp shuttle warp freighter and make something that is a little bit more economical less voxel although Kavane used the stretched voxel on here so uh, it's kind of odd how he does voxel but one one voxel actually covers like four or eight times the area it should so uh, there's actually less weight on here in voxel than you would think so uh, we'll just uh, have to see how things work out that's uh it's been kind of interesting doing this little experiment uh i didn't go through all the different kinds of scenarios but uh it's kind of interesting uh did want to show you guys in case you didn't make it over here for christmas that we did have a christmas theme going on in the central park area the central park has not been built fully yet so this is all we got uh we did have uh Frosty here. We're hoping he won't uh, thaw out. Uh, and he does use the force. He has a lightsaber. It's a very small lightsaber because he doesn't have very much uh, midichlorians or whatever in his uh, bloods or in his uh, water that makes up his uh, composition. So, you know, his midichlorian, midichlorian count is very low. Now, I probably pronounced that wrong, and all the Star Wars fans will get mad at me, but I really don't care. Uh, and these are uh, actually lightsaber trees. These are growing lightsabers. You can see the lightsaber starting to come out there. So, uh, so this is a Star Wars theme, themed Christmas thing, right? Uh, and you may ask, where's Rudolph? Where is Rudolph? Where's, there's all these other reindeer here. Where's Rudolph? I'll show you where Rudolph is. He's hiding. Some wise guy put him in, put him in tacos. Oh, wait, it's up on top. Let me uh, force respawn up to the ship up there. Boom, diddy boom. All right, so now we're up on top of the AGG uh, tower. Or the skyscraper, I should say. And in this ship over here, the uh, Skyfall Mega, or uh, what is it called hell then magnum skyfall magnum i get it wrong every time 
so, and this ship, some wise guy put Rudolph in here. <laughs> I don't know when that happened, but I think he just snuck away from the other reindeer because nobody wanted to play with him and decided to come over here and hang out by the AGG unit because it kind of had a glowing blue area and he had a glowing red nose and yeah, I think he kind of fell in love with it. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, uh, he's here hanging out in Taco's ship. This is a <laughs> this is a 40 container ship. Uh, 40 container Skyfall ship. So the Skyfall series uh, as you may or may not know, have these uh, uh, th these set up like this, and a lot of them have down facing engines. All right, and the down facing engines he put repulsors here instead, but the down facing engines allow you to land with a heavier load because it it uh, of course is facing down, and when the engine comes on, it gives you some upward thrust. So, uh, but he did a good job with this one. It looks really good. It's got 40 containers in it, and it will. It will, I've taken 13 point something kilotons off of Haven with it and landed here. Although I did land a tiny bit hard with 13.7 kilotons, uh, it has it had no problem getting it up in the Atmo at a 1G of Haven. So, anyway, uh, and this is uh, my hauler that Kavine built. So, uh, exciting stuff coming because there's going to be a whole bunch of ships here soon. Uh, let me just finish out this video and show you guys something. So we're going to have a ship show here as soon as we get a bunch of the ships, uh, you know, constructed and put in here. That Legacy Chimera ships, some of them, and some of them will be uh, custom built ships. Uh, some of them will be Legacy ships that have been refitted for, uh, you know, from beta to now because there's been some rule changes. Uh, we're going to put up a racing course over here where we have our ship show. We're also going to have some races and we're going to have a, a giveaway when we have them. We've been putting these rings up here just to practice. And the goal is that you have to come over, you have to bring over a compactable, you have to compact it in front of us, compactable pocket rocket uh, with no more than, let's say, a certain amount of fuel. Uh, and they have to be able to go through the rings, right? And. So I've got rings set up here. You can see there's a purple one way down there. Uh, but uh, this is not the course. This is just like kind of like a, a trial thing. Uh, but we're actually thinking about incorporating some uh, some of the buildings in. Like maybe you have to fly through the factory here. Uh, don't break our machines, darn it. Maybe you have to fly through the middle of this one. If you, uh, if you look up here, there's uh, quite a bit of space where you can actually fly through this. Let's go up here, get in build mode. You can actually fly through there, but that would not be good. Uh, but you can fly through here. Maybe we put a ring or two up here. Let's uh, go up higher. There's also a spot here where you can fly through, right? So maybe this is one of our, I think maybe we set up a course to where you have to fly through certain parts of certain buildings and then you have to fly through certain rings and uh, we'll have we'll have some prizes we'll have uh, uh, I've proposed that we do a ship giveaway as the grand prize uh, and what we we're going to do is we're going to have a ship show we're going to have all the chimera ships uh, the Prometheus Taco's going to bring the Prometheus back that's that's an awesome build that he did before they had the smoothing tool out, which if you look at it is pretty amazing. Uh, and we're gonna have all the little ships that people have built. And then we're gonna invite other people to bring their ships over, right? We may, uh, we may or may not put them all in the pyramid, which is gonna be our ship show. Uh, we may ask Angry Dad if he wants to bring his uh, uh, ride over here that he has in the cages every week and actually, uh, Hold it inside the pyramid, maybe. Uh, this, this would contain it. Uh, or we may put the ships in here because this is supposed to be our ship show room and we need to finish it up anyway, right? So I'm, I'm not sure how that's going to work out. 
a lot of work went into this. Kavin was the, the main builder of this so far. He's been very busy with work and stuff, so we haven't got this uh, quite finished yet, but he's done a fantastic job. It looks great. Uh, and it's going to be a great ship show room once we get it all outfitted and uh, we have all the ships in here. Uh, we're probably going to mount one of the ships up on the top, just kind of as a, you know, like the old 60s gas station where you had, you know, something up on top of a, a, a big stick. We're just going to do that, put a ship up there and pose it like it's taken off. Maybe put some red voxel out the back that looks like flames. So, uh, kind of like DU when they make the starting intro screens, they put stuff up that doesn't really happen and make it look really cool. <laughs> you know, it's like they have like... 15 miners laying out. There's no way you could put 15 miners on one plot. Uh, they would probably argue that's multiple tiles and that's where they come together. Uh, but anyway, uh, and, and the combat, the space combat, <laughs> doesn't really look quite like that, but that's how it looks. So we may just uh, put a, uh, a model ship up on top there and kind of pose him. Who knows? Uh, but exciting things happening. Uh, you know, we just had the market open too, and and that's going well. We've had a lot of people coming over and buying parts. Uh, some people buying a lot, like like outfitting their whole ship, uh, and having fun doing it. So, uh, all right, guess we're gonna go ahead and call this video. Uh, I've ambled, uh, uh, meandered off target long enough, chased rabbits down rabbit trails, and. Uh, kind of got off topic there, but it's been a pretty good, uh, pretty good experiment. So I really enjoyed that. So everybody have a great day and we will catch you later.